Now the moon may be over 200,000 miles away, but one of the leading nations in the space race is just 40 miles off from the Lancashire coast. The Isle of Man believe their space industry could be worth over a billion pounds over the next few years. Companies on the island have already been involved in Mars landings, dozens of commercial satellites, and are now looking into the prospect of space tourism. We sent our North of England correspondent, Morland Sanders, to investigate. What's this place famous for? Well, plenty of this quite a few of those, and a week of these. But forget about the superbikes of the TT. There's something even more warp factor nine that this island is now globally known for. Try 0 to 60 in less than two seconds and a top speed of 17,000 miles an hour. In a far-flung corner of this remote island, a hangar that's now home to evidence of the Isle of Man's claims to be a serious contender in the global space race two ex-Soviet space stations and a capsule capable of transporting people to orbit, brought to the Isle of Man for potential refurbishment. The company has an ambitious plan to have tourists in space come 2013, and this operation is the showpiece in a 10-year strategy by the Isle of Man government. I see a very bright future for the island space industry. Tim Crane is the man behind the island's space sector an industry expected to turn over a billion pounds. What's the dream, Tim? For the Isle of Man to be recognised as one of the best places in the world to operate a space business from. How realistic is that dream? I think it's very realistic. If you look at the critical mass we already have of companies that are here, we're already well on that road, I would say. That journey made all the more attractive by a 0% corporation tax. And the island isn't just pulling in companies with a P.O. box and a bank account. They're here making things and employing people for the most ambitious projects. These images were taken from the Mars landing craft. Part of the optics on board were made where? You guessed it. It is quite an important thing to, to know that what you're doing is, is out there. This is our latest acquisition. Um, Adrian Jowett shows off his high-tech machinery. Here lenses are cut, polished and coated to provide a perfect product capable of imagery hundreds of miles above the Earth's surface. Are you proud of what's happening on the island? Of course. Why do you say that? Um, why wouldn't you be? It's a very small community. Um, I think we've got less than 80,000 people living on this island. And to be at the front end of of that kind of industry, um, it's got to make anybody proud. And another reason for islanders to feel proud was about to blast off. Hi, welcome. Hi. This is uh, Landsat. If the space business thrives, then the Isle of Man will thrive. Ian Jarrett runs a satellite positioning company on the island. It's going to provide broadband services primarily across the USA um, and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's going to be a big day and we've got our fingers crossed that everything is going to go smoothly. Morland, thank you very much. Well, wait, old chap. This is Launch Control Isle of Man style. Not exactly NASA, but here they wait for a satellite launch from Kazakhstan. Its legal position in space has been organised from this office in downtown Douglas. So how are you feeling now with a couple of minutes to go before launch? Well, yeah, it um, gets a bit closer, doesn't it? I hope everything goes fine. Why am I riding on it? In the final countdown, five, four, three, two, one. Ignition, start, and we have liftoff. So thanks in a small way to the growing expertise on this island, a satellite is now successfully orbiting 36,000 kilometres above us. But you know it may not end with pieces of aluminium because one survey suggested this was the fifth most likely nation to next have its flag on the surface of the moon. Morland Sanders, Channel 4 News, Douglas.